Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, I, I was thinking about your question of my top three uh, best things, and I'm, I'm gonna cheat because I have to put my book, The Triflers, in there. No. Be because it's an original art piece. It's the it's the, it's my number one. It's the best thing I've ever made because it's wholly original. It's my thing. Uh, it's it's not derivative. I'm not fucking reviewing uh, uh, Sword Art Online in it. It's just my characters doing my story. Fuck it. That's my favorite thing I've made. And then, uh, and then Monkey Jones stops the school shooting. And then, uh, and I don't know. School shooter! But you, Burger, you, uh, almost exclusively are in the realm of originality. Because when you're making music, I mean, sometimes you have to, like, remix a beat. Sometimes the song is specifically about Elliot Roger, but... I mean, at least you're making original shit. You're more of an artist than 99% of YouTubers, I would say. The least original thing I made was Rest in Peace Elliot 3 because I totally bit off Tupac's verse, but that was like part of the joke. Sure. Um, and, and that's not to say uh, art can't be, I guess, referential to other art or whatever the fuck. But if we're, if, the way I see it, the more original it is, the, uh, the higher I'm gonna regard you. Maybe that's just me. But the saddest thing about this, and I have not watched any Jake Paul videos in their entirety, but a Jake Paul video is far more original and artistic to me than somebody reviewing Jake Paul, because Jake Paul is just going about his daily life and, and doing whatever the fuck he does, and then the Jake Paul reviewer is just telling you about this other guy's video. Yeah. So in that regard, Jake Paul is more art than somebody reviewing Jake Paul. Although, Nerd City, uh... His video, I'm not talking about here because he uh, he went a little above and beyond and created a piece of art in and of itself. Sometimes uh, your analysis review thing can transcend the genre and become art, which I think he truly did. Which is another reason why that video has me so uh, up in arms because it's it's just beyond good in any way that I could this ever. Video, hope this video to be. has you fucking shook. Did you see me in the Discord that we're all in? I, I added them immediately and said, Nerd City, uh, Rusty Cage, great video, boys. I'm fucking shook. And then, uh, since those guys are, uh, they're too good for us, it took them a whole five minutes to reply. <laughs> those fucking assholes. You never said that when I released Ghost of Christmas Past. I was shook in a negative way when you released <laughs> that. So, so Nerd City's living, living in your head for free right now. No rent. Well, I don't know about that. Um, he is a very handsome man, so I would like to have him on my mind, but I was gonna ask you, Burger, there are different communities on YouTube. I guess you got the, like you were talking about, the commentary community, and oh, there are a bunch God. of backstabbers, uh, you got those, uh, those fedora-tipping skeptics. Ah, oh, um, internet blood sports. Yeah, and I was wondering, what, if any, community are we in? Because we don't really talk to people, it's like you and me, some and then we talked to Bernie and we talked to uh, Rusty Cage like we're friends with them and then like we'll talk to Nerd City for two minutes in a chat room once every four months just yeah. like his video schedule. Um, are we part of a community other than like the the high school clique of the outcasts who don't have any other friends so they just we're, talk to each other? We're in the edge lord community. But I don't even feel like I'm part of a community because I like do we have any? Well, the problem is the edge lord community can't have a community. Because we don't know how to have a community. Because we don't because know how to have we friends. We ostracize ourselves from society and we're ostracized. Yeah. We don't know how. Yeah, it's like the outcast community. Yeah, so it's a, it's, uh, well, because it's together outside, alone. Outside of you, Bernie, and Rusty, I don't know if I have any YouTuber friends, really. I mean, like, I'm, I don't have I'm an acquaintance with Rada, who makes Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. I'm an acquaintance with Emp Lemon, who makes videos that I'm also very jealous of. But... Like, we're not really a community. Like, what does it mean to be a community? Yeah, that, like, you guys make videos with each other and shit, or that's what? That's something I'm trying to do, too. I'm trying to find rappers I could collab with, but a lot of them are flakes. Oh, yeah. yeah it's hard to find reliable people. It really is. I had this, uh, I hired this guy to do, like, a Let's Play channel with me. And he's supposed to, like, put up, like, three Pokemon Nuzlocks a week. <laughs> but then, like, his girlfriend was gonna this be in gonna, town. This isn't gonna be, like, there's gonna be so much Nuzlocke by the time this goes out. <laughs> you wanna tell everyone the date? <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, if you watch episode one of Asperger's Nuzlocke, <laughs> he says in the episode, Jackie's on her way here, so I'm gonna edit and upload this. <laughs> the the episode was uploaded at least three full weeks after he he's <laughs> recorded it. Weeks. He's, he's, Jesus he's, Christ. He, he has no sense of, uh... Urgency? Yeah. His... What was the, the word? Very, very common word about, um, the things that you, you, uh... Value and, and want to priority. <laughs> yeah, your priorities are all a muck. 
They're not in order. Yeah. I, I can't think of simple words like free will and priorities how anymore. how you wrote books. Well, because when I'm writing a book, I, if I can't think of a word, I can, like, Google it. But when I'm speaking out loud very quickly, trying to pay attention to a video cuckold. game. Yeah, I'm an obtuse cuckold. I do have a problem with forgetting very common terms and phrases, and it makes me sound like a big retard. <laughs> but I'm fine with it. If that's one of my memes, I'll, I'll live with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I say fucking facade all the time, so who cares? Oh, when I did my Elliot Roger audiobook, I mispronounced a shit ton of words because I'd only ever read them. Because that evidently... Monkey, you're an English major. You should know how all words are pronounced. Like, nigga, I read these words. I don't know how the... I've never heard people say this shit. Monkey, where the fuck's the umlaut? I'm naive. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I've never heard somebody say placate out loud before. I don't know how the fuck that word is supposed to be pronounced. I just read that shit. My, believe it or not, my friends and family, when I'm in, uh, when I'm 19, they don't use those kinds of words all the time. <laughs> if you can believe it. It's not on everybody's common vernacular. Really, my mom was telling me about the verisimilitude of my channel earlier. <laughs> yeah, you don't say? Yeah. Really? She found it quite shallow and pedantic. <laughs> well, I mean, if you can't pronounce shallow and pedantic, maybe you are retarded. Oh. Uh, I've just, uh, this is my, uh, this session of Let's Plays, these seven episodes of this week, are my time to be, uh, self-conscious. You're having a therapy and, session. Uh, yeah. You're having a therapy session here. Honestly, I mean, though, I'm on the brink of suicide this I'm week. I'm fucking pissed off at you. I'm gonna have some talks with you off camera. Uh, no, you do at, it now. I don't want to hear this shit. I don't want to fucking hear this fucking. I. You have just discovered that you are good enough to. You. You. You never heard that you're smart. The smarter you are, the more you realize you don't know. You're good enough now. Uh, I don't want to compare myself no, to somebody have, who's intelligent. No, you. You are good enough now where you realize how bad you are. And now you're getting like existential and like wanting to quit about it. Don't be a little bitch. Just try and improve it more. I, I just, I don't know what to improve. Like, I don't know what to make because it's my own, I could, I could easily game the system like Digi has been doing this last month where he know, he made a whole video saying the end of Digi Gevlon or some shit. And I only read about it because somebody was writing about it in one of the discords I'm in. But he said, uh, I want this channel to grow, so I'm gonna make videos that I know are pandering and dog shit on purpose because I know that they're gonna be big. What was he doing before? He wasn't- he didn't- this- this year has been very bad for him up until this last month. Because he's been making shit that nobody cares about. Taco Gonzo journalism, yeah, changed it back. Just horrible, horrible <laughs> stuff. But now he's making daily videos about- Crunchyroll. Yeah, just shit. like- like stuff that everybody would want to click on. And I don't know how to find the medium in my mind where I'll make videos that people want to click on that at the same time is not reliant on pre-established things. Because I want to make things that are original and that... Uh, of course somebody's gonna click on a Crunchyroll video because it's one of the biggest websites on the internet! How do I make something that doesn't rely on other people's hard work without it being ostracizing and nobody wanting to click on it because they don't know what the hell it is? It's like an impossible task to be a, a, an original YouTuber who makes videos that people would want to click on. Of course somebody wants to click on a, an in-depth review of Death Note, because they're already a fan of Death Note. Yeah, they want they want their opinion validated. Yeah, they just want to hear about shit that is already famous and, and makes millions of dollars and they already know about we it. We all do it. I wa if I watch a video of The Wire and some guy's like, uh, Bunk Moreland's a faggot, I, I close the video. I'm like, man, what, what the <laughs> fuck do you know? Yeah, so, what do, what do I do to improve as a creator while also following this philosophy I have of not wanting to my my content to be 1000% reliant on pre-established um, things it, it seems impossible to me and I don't think I can do it do what you love but that's the problem is that it's for me it's also a business that I I want to you, be able to pay do my the rent. business do the always do the business but work extra hard on what you love yeah you think nerd city like did uh, nerd there's no way nerd city could make that video if he didn't love doing it and there's no way he could probably make that same video again. Like, that's a that's a once-in-a-lifetime video. Rusty Cage loves making music. And, like, that's why it's so good. Because he pours his heart into it. That was a problem that I had in music school, was that there were people, my peers, the the, the three other people that I um I finished music theory with, there were, there were 33 of us when we started and then on the first day. Only four of us passed. And those people physically, like... It was like they were handicapped unless they were doing the thing. Like, that guy was not himself unless he had a piano in front of him. Otherwise, he'd, he'd just be, like, thirsty. 
Like you hadn't had water in three days. You have to find the thing that you want to do the most, and then that's where you get to the nerd city level of just fucking high art. Yeah. You have to breathe it. You have to live and breathe it. Well, I think that thing <laughs> is a, a book I wrote two years ago. So I don't. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should start pushing the book more. Maybe you should write another book. Yeah, I do want to do that. Maybe I should just be a a a fucking loser sellout who makes a bunch of clickbait garbage videos so then I can dedicate my real time to making a book that only the real fans will appreciate, but I, I can't bring myself to do that. I, uh, I, I want to like every video I put up and it's harder and harder to do you these won't. days. You won't. Yeah, I know. It's because like it's impossible. a job. This is a job for you. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna go down the Psy route because, I mean, <laughs> at least I actually make things unlike Psy. He gave up. Well, Sai, well, I, you're honestly having a lot of parallels with Sai's fucking content issue right now, though. You, you no, because Sai himself only wanted to talk about other people's shit. He, yeah, his true. His grand, he, he thought his big Shakespearean great piece <laughs> of art is just yeah. talking about no, an anime. I'm not talking about He just whole wants thing. to I'm fucking about talk about, about other people's a shit. Anime. But no, I'm talking about how he, he thinks that, like, you know, YouTube values this this generic for the masses thing rather than art yeah which it does the problem is that he was fucking living the high life on it and then he just decided you know what like, fuck fuck free money as a as <laughs> good friend florian said he's like he's so stupid he fucking throws away free money and grow a beard you're so nobody sees yeah. your fat fucking I, face i can't even buy into size stupid fucking content thing when his idea of the perfect youtube content is still just talking about it's an anime. It's the thing that he's ostracizing. It's just fucking talking about somebody else's work. That's his idea of an original, beautiful art piece to be compared to Shakespeare. Of something to should be remembered forever, like Shakespeare. Yeah. What a fucking idiot. I, I, you know, now, now that you're having an artist crisis, how the fuck, and I ask this every time we talk about these people, how the fuck, does Digi get to the mindset that he's an 8 out of 10 artist? <laughs> I hate everything I've ever made! Because, because, Burger, other people don't share this mindset that talking about somebody else's video is not art. Even, even it's if not he, high art. I know Digi thinks he's like the fucking, like, best rapper ever. Like, well, fucking, that's just ego, that's fine. I don't, wh where? Rappers are allowed to have ego. What? But if, if he honestly thinks that talking about sword art online or whatever is 8 out of 10 art, then he's fucking insane. Like, I, I don't understand. But I imagine a lot of the people in the comments this week have disagreed with us and said, No, <laughs> a, a review that you put to video is definitely top tier art that should be hung in a museum. And they can feel that way, but right, I, I don't. How many uh, reviews of movies are in the Criterion Collection? <laughs> yeah, good question. How many, how many reviews are yeah. kept are kept by the Library of Congress for preservation? I'm, I'm pretty sure Roger Ebert had all of his reviews printed off, and they're hanging up next to the fucking Mo Mona Lisa right now. Because reviews are art. <laughs> they, they got a, a mold of his thumb and something in the Smithsonian. It's like these are the two thumbs that he gave. <laughs> There's two thumbs! <laughs> I mean, his, his thumbs probably are in some sort of, like, film museum, I have to imagine. I, I got to see a mold of Liszt's hands in, uh, yeah. I think it was, like, Austria. That was cool, because he played piano with those fucking things. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he made original <laughs> art. Now, if he wrote, um, if he wrote a review of... He wrote a uh, musical of, of, review of Alcon's fucking concerto, <laughs> his contemporary, and said, I am an 8 out of 10 pianist. Yeah. Now, uh, if he made a song that reflected on the other guy's music and, like, shit all over it, then that would be art. But putting pen to paper and telling me what he felt about it, I don't know if that qualifies. I... It is, it is, like, mind-boggling how these people think that reviews can be art. Yeah, and people will, will die on that hill. I've had people sh just go furious. They've unsubscribed from all, all my <laughs> shit. They block me on Twitter because of, I had this opinion. And I know that these are going to be controversial Let's Plays because we don't think... Because these people, they've been on YouTube for so long that they literally can't see the difference between art and uh, b between a review That's and an something thing. worthy of being reviewed. That's, they can't differentiate it in their brain. That's interesting because we didn't, we grew up in a time before this. Maybe the, this new generation, oh my God, we're this old now. 
Oh God. Right? I, it, it's either a bunch of kids who don't know the difference or a bunch yeah, of egomaniacs bunch... who think that their opinion is in itself art. But that art. might be, th like, maybe this is, this is con this is art to kids now. This is what they know. Yeah. Uh, you remember seeing Star Wars in theaters. Nobody saw, you know, like, mostly art for them is YouTube videos now. Yeah, Jeremy John's review of Star Wars is their version of art. The Mr. Plinkin <laughs> review, it's, Ben and Bernie told me. What? That the Mr. Plinker reviews are art. Well, that's that's one of those gray line things where yeah. it's not just a review because he adds his own original stuff to it. But it's Like a JonTron still... video isn't 100% reliant on somebody else's stuff. He's putting in his own jokes and, and all that. But somebody who is just talking and giving their opinion, I, I don't think that's art. Uh, JonTron rides the line at, at points, at least. He, he's halfway there to the point of full originality. But it's still the video itself is completely reliant on like yeah. the title of the video is not uh, John Tron does something funny. It's the name of the game. It relies on rely, it relies on the the brand recognition and the the title recognition of other people's stuff. You yeah. Know? Which uh, yeah. Well, we'll see you next time. We got I think one or two more of these this week.